everybody, Justin from Utah Air Guns. We're here. Today we've got a cool, exciting day because we have Infrared in the house and we're doing demos for the whole day. Since they're here and we've got factory reps on hand, um, we'd love to uh, do a little bit of a review on this, especially on this new guy. Uh, as you can see, it's not your average thermal scope. Angela, why don't you walk us through some of the, some of the key features of, of the new optic here. Yeah, so this is our, uh, our new uh, RS-75. Um, and uh, there are a few unique features. Uh, first and foremost, this is the uh, first commercial thermal imager with a 1280 resolution sensor. Yeah. So what that does is gives you uh, four times the resolution of a uh, what was high resolution on the commercial yeah. market. But then they've paired that with a couple other features that are unique and custom designed around this product. So the first, um, a lot of people notice this mount. So this is a custom uh, spring-loaded mount where uh, the, the mount will actually move on a slider oh, yeah. rail. And these springs will absorb a lot of the shock uh, recoil, so to save it gotcha. from going into the uh, into the sensor, into the product. So that was unique uh, for the 1280. That's awesome. And then on the back side, um, we couldn't just use a normal display because with the increase of resolution and the sensor quality, we had to find something that's going to match. So we went with a one inch 2560 by 2560 resolution display. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So not only do we have a lot of pixels in the sensor. We've also greatly increased the resolution in the display to, to let you realize that. Uh, and then on the back side, uh, there's a unique eyepiece here. It's an orthoscopic design. What that means is there's actually a lens set of glass lenses that will take and create okay. increased eye relief and field of view. So as we're playing with this today, when you're when you're behind it, you can you'll notice you'll be able to get pretty far back and yeah. still have a, a big yeah. clean image. Because I know that's a challenge with thermals or night vision. Typically, is eye relief is not there. It's, you got to really be up on it, which obviously when you're shooting something with decent recoil, that, could, that, be an issue. that could be an issue. Yeah. So, and a lot of times there's a, maybe just a clear plastic screen or some small uh, diopter adjustment to put that lens set behind it is a unique thing that, uh, that nobody else is doing to, to create the eye relief. Well, that's what I noticed when I first looked through this uh, last night when it arrived, I was like, demo time. Yeah. I fired it up and as soon as I looked at it, I was like, how do I explain it other than like, if you saw a huge top of the line cinema TV versus the old stuff. You know, it was like looking through it, the field of view, I know you mentioned bigger field of view, but yeah. let's hammer on that for a second. Sure. When I pulled it up, the field of view on this is insane. It's like you just sat down in a movie theater looking through this eyepiece. It's so big and perfectly clear. That was the first thing I noticed. I'm like, oh my gosh, this display is insane. So, yeah. so the sensor and lens native resolution is, is 2x, so it's 12 degree field of view. So it's 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 fairly wide to begin with, yeah. but then that, that eyepiece kind of takes and immerses you. It's like IMAX. It's like that's you go to I'm IMAX theater. Yeah, that, that's what I said. Yeah. It's some, how to explain it to be like in a in a cinema, like in a theater. That's yeah. the only way I could explain yeah. it. And it's crystal clear and then the edge clarity, I mean it's it's edge edge clear yeah. because because of that lens design. So Correct. again, we had to create something that would justify the sensor. Just just doing a right. doing a regular eyepiece would have been been a disservice yeah. to, to what this thing. Could yeah, do. <laughs> right. And the other part of that is the manual focus lens. So uh, it's an F1 lens. Um, so that's going to be very efficient. Get get a lot of energy to the sensor. And what that does with such a big sensor and, and such a wide aperture of the lens, it gives you a, a very controllable depth of field. So you can really fine tune your focus to where you want it and yeah. really get a dead nuts focus, tack sharp yeah. with the lens. So all that kind of plays into uh, quite the optical experience. Yeah, which that was, that was the second thing I noticed. I took it outside, started messing around with it and getting that like just perfect focus. Yep. But the other part of this is having this, you know, we can say, yeah, it's 1280. Like, yeah, that's the only one on the market, and it is that badass. I don't know it how is. to no, explain it. It is. No, it's badass. But <laughs> typically, and if you've used thermal and night vision products before, and especially, like, even if it was a few years old, you really know. Zoom is not the greatest feature. I hate to throw that out. <laughs> Zoom in, in lower resolution thermal or night vision, digital night vision, is useless. Yeah, so you're making pixels bigger. Yes. So traditionally, when you zoom on a, a traditional day scope, you have an optical zoom, oh, an erector yeah. system that's optically zooming. You can't do that with thermal because the lenses are fixed. Yeah. Uh, they do exist, they're very expensive. So traditionally, we've done it with e-zoom. Every time you do 2x, 4x e-zoom, you're effectively half the resolution. So since you're starting with 1280, if you go to 2x e-zoom, you're effectively at 640. You can go to 4x and you're effectively at 380 or 384. So the benefit to that 
is the ultra wide field of view with 12 power 2x but yeah. also usable detail when you do increase the digital zoom it does not degrade and, as fast. And that, and that was the coolest part because normally you just expect you hit zoom on a on a thermal and it's like eh, it starts to get pretty pixelated pretty, pretty quick yeah. this one i kept hitting it and i'm like and i do the find the just on the focus and i'm like this is still incredible good. like yeah. you have zoom and just like super clarity still it was yep. So that alone is like a game changer. Yeah. So now overall, uh, again, 1280 is a big deal. We're extremely excited to be the first to have that. But the other features that are wrapped around that are truly unique and um, kind of all create the, the perfect product for a premium thermal. It, it's just what everybody's ever wanted out of thermal. That high resolution, some variable power that's actually useful and still clear. And then this giant field of view. I mean, to be able to just sit, you know, if you're, if you're a predator guy and you're calling or whatever, and you're on glass, as they say, in the field, that's such a huge field of view. You don't need a separate scanner necessarily to be scanning for movement and then jumping on it. And you can zoom in and still have the detail to ID. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing. Calling yeah. in. Identification. Yep. That is a big deal. Especially at Zoom. What a... So awesome. <laughs> so tell me about these range finders and how they work because you either buy a, a unit with it or without it and, and there's no in between. But this comes you can, in the box. Yep. Comes in it's the box. included with the RS75. So this is the, the ILR1000. So it's an integrated laser range finder module that's available for Mark One products currently. It is an accessory of the Mark Ones. Yeah. It is included with the RS75. So what this does will provide real-time laser range finding function that pops up on the screen up to a thousand yards. So when you plug this in, plug it into the data port, you'll have a readout uh, on the top right screen that gives you yardage in a constant ranging mode. So you can see that in real time and it is an accessory that you can take on or off depending on if you uh, are yeah. packing a gun in a gun case or whatever yeah. it does come off, so that's nice. When you say real time, as you're scanning, you have a digital display of your yardage constantly. So if you're following something moving or in or, or you're scanning structure, it's always telling you live time what, what that range is. For us air gunners, that is a huge function because we don't have this like flat trajectory out to yeah. three, 400 yards like, like you are with some of the center fires. But for guys shooting even like a blackout or you know sub rounds that don't have that that laser trajectory that you have to know your live yardage because it is such a change yeah. in POI. That that's that was another key thing that I noticed when I was scanning through here. I was like, okay, that's and having it on such a great display. Is yeah, money. <laughs> so depth perception is inherently a little more difficult with thermal. So yeah, is that 100, 150? That's a big deal with an air rifle. Uh, so you deal with 300 blackout. So uh, this will give you real time. Or you know, hey, if you're with a buddy, you say, hey, you know, from the near the near. Near pig is 100, the near, yeah. you know, the far coyote, whatever, is 150. Yeah. Uh, just being able to know that on demand is, is very key. It's a difference. Yeah. It's a difference of you're going to make the shot or you may or may not yeah. make the shot. We never miss, though, right? No, never. Okay. Never. Yeah. Uh, not, not on camera, <laughs> ever. Yeah, thanks for walking us through this a little bit. We're, again, we're going to dive into the, the finite details more. We're going to go play with this. We've got it mounted on the FX Impact M3, you know, all custom out. It's got to be worthy platform for that. So we're going to uh, we're going to go play with this and we can't wait to show you the show you the results. Yeah.